Hello and welcome to this tutorial on recursion. I'm Steve and this video should give you first insights on how to code recursive functions. We use JavaScript in this video, but feel free to use any programming language you like to do the exercises. I'm also going to record some other videos about more advanced topics on recursion, but for now let's get started with the basics. Okay, we speak of recursion when we have a function that contains a call to itself, okay? A function calling itself, that's recursion. And the idea behind this is that we want to break down a big and complex problem into smaller and easier and simpler parts, okay? Basically, we are distinguishing between two cases or two parts, namely the trivial case and the non-trivial case, all right? To distinguish stuff in programming, we need something like an if statement or a switch statement or whatever your language provides you with. And using this statement, which is an integral part on in almost any uh, recursive function, um, we can distinguish the trivial case. This is the case where the problem is already easy enough for us to solve it, okay? Or the non-trivial case. This is where we where the problem is still too complex to to solve it and we still have to break it down even further into simpler parts and we do this over and over again until we reach the trivial case all right okay let's get started so the first function we are going to write is a function that prints the numbers from n to 1 so the functions get uh, the function gets a parameter called n and if for example we call the function with a value of 3 it should print out the numbers 3, 2, and 1 on the screen, okay? So, um, the first thing to do in any recursive function is what, uh, is to think about what's the base case and what's the, what's, uh, the non-trivial case, okay? We call the trivial case also the base case. So, the trivial case will be when n is equal to 1. So, I can write, I can write an if statement here. If n is equal to 1, we are, oops, that's very the wrong ones. Here we go. Um, if n is equal to 1, we are facing the trivial case, all right? Otherwise, uh, we are facing the non-trivial case. The non-trivial case is when n is bigger than, uh, greater than 1, okay? And for the sake of simplicity, we assume here that n is greater than 0 all the time. So in a real-life application, you would uh, you would check that, of course. Okay, in the trivial case, we have to print out the numbers from n to 1, from 1 to 1, which means we have just to print out the number 1. So let's do this. Uh, right line of 1. Actually, right line is not the standard JavaScript function, in case you wonder. Um, but I'm going to use this one uh, to print on a screen. Um, in the non-trivial case, where n is bigger than 1, we still want to print out the number, right? So we're going to print out n, and then we call the function it, uh, again. We, we are placing a call to the very same function again with n minus 1, okay? So we are going to print out the, uh, the, the, the value of n, and then we are calling the function again with a decreased value of n that is going to be printed out. Then we're calling the function again with a decreased value of n that is going to be printed out. And we do this over and over again until n reaches uh, the value of 1. And this is the trivial, the trivial case where just uh, this number 1 is written out on the screen. So <clears throat> in a more abstract way, what we are doing here is with every recursive call, we are reducing the complexity of the problem because the higher the number n is, the, the, com the more complex is the problem we are facing, okay? So in our case, the value of the number n is the, uh, the complexity of our problem and we are decreasing it by the recursive call. So we have, we have two important uh, ideas here in this function. The first one is that we need to distinguish between the trivial and the non-trivial case. And the second important idea is that we call the function uh, again and we try to decrease the complexity of the problem, okay? 
that's the, the main story about recursion. If you understand that, you will understand recursion. Okay, so let's try it out. Print n to 1 of 3. Um, let's load the file. 3 to 1. This is exactly what we wanted. Um, let's try it with 5. Um, okay, 5 for 3 to 1. Perfect. As a first exercise, I want you to write a function, a recursive function, uh, print 1 to n, that takes a parameter n, and it should print out the numbers from 1 to n. Okay, It should print out the numbers from 1 to n on the screen. So it is very similar to what we did just before, only the, uh, the sort order of, of the numbers uh, is reversed. So. Pause the video here, uh, code it in your favorite language, take your time and resume the video when you are ready. Alright, welcome back. I hope you found the solution. I'm just going to copy and paste the code here. I'm going to write the, uh, write the appropriate function call. Okay. So when you think about it, in the original function we wrote, we, we, we printed out the value of n onto the screen and then we made the recursive call and with the recursive call we decreased the value of n. Okay, So the greatest number was printed out first. So if we want to reverse this order we just have to swap those two lines. Okay, So now we decrease the value of n and we make the recursive call. We do this over and over and over again until n equals 1. Then we are going to write 1 onto the screen and then we're going to print out all the other numbers. Okay, so let's try it out. Let's just have a call of print1 to n with a value of 7. Let's save the file. Load file. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so we're done. Now I want to show you the recursive implementation of a function called factorial. Uh, actually, I assume that you already know it. But to repeat it, uh, the factorial of a non-negative integer n, denoted by n exclamation mark, is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. For example, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. And we're going to implement this in a recursive function. <coughs> Actually, I want to show you something nice here. This is a recurrence relation. Mathematicians use this style of defining things uh, for, yeah, for many years. And if you look, this is a recursive definition. Okay? It's recursive because it defines the factorial function by usage of the factorial function. And it also has the, dis the distinction between cases, okay? It distinguishes between the trivial case where n equals 0 and the non-trivial case where n is greater than 0, okay? So that's one, one cool property of recursive functions. So we can, we can easily translate mathematical definitions into code with, with the while using recursion, okay? And I'm going to show you how this looks like. So what I've written here is just what we just read on Wikipedia. So we want to write a function called fact of n and it should return 1 if n is equal to 0 and it should return factorial of n minus 1 times n if n is bigger than 0, if n is greater than 0, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's let's code it. If n is equal to 0, we have to return oops, 1. Otherwise, we are going to return just this, actually. Okay. So, that's it. We are we're done. I want to just uh, try it out. Try out if it works. Factorial of 5. And we're going to... Uh, write it on the screen, of course. So let's try it out. 120. Okay. Um, factorial of 3 would be 6. Okay. So, one last thing I want to cover in this video is the substitution model. 
and with the substitution model you have a powerful tool of analyzing recursive functions such as the factorial so let's try it out with the factorial okay the factorial of 3 well when we call the factorial of 3 what happens 3 is not 0 so we are in the else case and the else case returns the factorial of n minus 1 times n okay but n is equal to 3 in this call okay n is equal to 3 in this call <clears throat> so we can substitute n with 3 all right 3 minus 1 is 2 I hope we agree on that so this line factorial of 3 is equal to this line which says factorial of 2 uh, times 3 okay so this is a way we can we can substitute what's happening in the function with the function call or vice versa and and we make the function easier so to say and we make it easier for us to to see what's going on so basically we can use the substitution model to analyze what the function does so uh, let's take it even further okay factorial of 2 well let me just copy this factorial of 2 is well 2 is not 0 so we we have to use this thing here factorial of 2 is nothing else then the factorial of 2 minus 1 times 2 with every step in the substitution with every substitution we have to replace the the the, the parameter with the value we are calling the function with okay 2 minus 1 is 1 we can take it even further factorial of 1 is once again this little guy here So it's equal to factorial of 1 minus 1 times 1. Okay, 1 minus 1 is 0. And if we substitute one more time, we see that factorial of 0, we are here, is actually 1. Okay, so factorial of 0 is 1. And what we just did is we substituted the function calls with uh, what the function returns okay and we did this over and over again until we had no more function calls left in our expression so this is what the uh, the interpreter or the com uh, uh, or, or what the computer reduces our function call to okay so in the end factorial of 3 is equivalent to 1 times 1 times 2 times 3 which is 6 okay this is 6 uh, let's try it out factorial of 3 is 6 okay we already tried it out, tried it out okay all right last but not least I've prepared an exercise for you you can do it if you want write a function sum of n that returns the sum of the first n integers so sum of 5 should return 15 because 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15 okay use recursion to solve this problem and as it is very similar to what we did with the factorial I'm sure you can do it without too much effort actually there's another way a much better way and a much more performant way to sum up the first n integers and this is by usage of the Gaussian sum formula so look it up write a function sum cos of n and you can you can use this function as well to sum up the first n integers um, actually I don't know how to pronounce this guy here so if I'm doing it wrong please tell me I apologize I'm sorry okay this formula is is kind of important in computer sciences because when you when it comes to analyzing the performance of your code the performance of your algorithms you will use this function very often it's worth knowing it actually and it's easy to remember okay so this is the end of this introduction if you want to know more about recursion have a look at the other videos in this playlist I've just started recording this series so be sure to check out this place from time to time as I'm going to add new videos hopefully very soon so thanks for watching happy coding and see you next time